good weekend in, in Michigan State. Really happy with the way that we we uh, we serve the ball specifically and and um, uh, how we closed out game three in the, in the match at, at Michigan uh, on uh, on Saturday. Uh, and then we've got a we got a tough stretch in front of us that we're certainly uh, excited to, to test ourselves. We've got uh, Ohio State on Friday, uh, Penn State on on Saturday, and it, uh, it 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 amps up a little bit for us. Okay, we have a question from Dennis. Yeah, Kelly, you mentioned that third set that Michigan, um, where you added a new wrinkle on the right side where it's been kind of mixing and matching there since Devin moved. What did you see in Anna, even though they didn't really test her much, but how does she fit in there? And how do you see that position playing out? What's, what's your perfect scenario as far as settling on someone? Or do you match up with opponents with different people with different skill sets? You know, I think uh, the options right now are are Jade and uh, Demps and Anna Smrek and Lauren Jardine. I think all three of them have different strengths, um, you know, and uh, their skill sets are, are very different. We've, you know, I, I like, uh, I like, it, it'd be a challenge for anybody, you, you know, of, uh, you know, uh, against any of them, but kind of waiting for one of them to grab a hold of the position. And I'm not sure anybody has, has done that yet. Um, but, um, but I don't know how big of a deal that is right, right now. It's, um, you, you know, it's, uh, it's Anna putting Anna in there. What, what we saw, what well, there weren't, there weren't a whole lot of sets to the left side with, uh, with Anna and, and Dana up there or Anna and Devin up there. I, I don't know if it, they set them all the left side at all. They all of a sudden went back row even more and, and back behind. So, you know, that's a, that's a daunting deal when you see that um, and Anna and uh, in either one of our middles out there. Um, she's got the capability of hitting off one foot and running quick so we can run some double quicks and uh, two people that can run the slide. And that makes it a little bit different if, uh, if she were to be in there. Um, you know, but Jade and, and LJ gives us uh, some different looks as well. Um, not sure what we'll do. We're going to continue to see how it plays out. Further questions for Coach Sheffield? Uh, Dennis? Um, yeah, you mentioned your opponents this week. Um, you didn't face either of them last year, so you've had a little gap in seeing them, and yeah. this, is, this is your first look at Emily Landot with Ohio State, who's came in with a, book, a real bang last year. And I don't know, I know you've got more studying to do on this, but yeah. what do you see in her? And then what's what's your take on Penn State from a distance? You know, we'll start with with Ohio State. Uh, obviously, you know, I think they're a high energy team. Uh, they play hard. Uh, Landot is 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 a real factor over there on the right side. You know, they, uh, uh, they go to her an awful lot. Their middles, very, very quick uh, triggers. They get on a ball uh, in a hurry. I think both of them are hitting at a really high percentage. Their left sides are doing a great job. Uh, you know, they, uh, you know, it's a team that I think works really well in transition. Uh, their, their libro is, is great at keeping the ball off the floor. I think their setter has done a good job of, of moving the ball around, keeping everybody active and, and involved. Uh, they, they don't make a lot of errors. Um, it's, uh, so that's what I'm seeing out of Ohio State. Uh, just a really, really, really solid team. It's, you, don't see a lot of, you, you don't see a lot of weakness out of them. I mean, they're just they're a very complete team. Um, Penn State, I think that they're kind of still trying to figure some things out with uh, with with their lineup, especially on the left. They're, they've got kind of a, uh, moving pieces over there on the left. Uh, a lot of experience, a lot of talent <laughs> on the left for sure. But with quite a few people that have been transferring in over there, I think they're still trying to figure things out as, as well. I you know it seems like maybe they have some some health issues that they're trying to work through. Uh, Caitlin Horde, I think, is one of the, the dominant middles in, 
in a long time. I mean, she is a uh, Horde is a is a she's a wrecking ball there in the middle. And uh, their other middle has done a really nice job of, of coming in and, and giving them uh, what that position needs. Uh, the right side is, is one of the, she's one of the best players in the league, you know, and one of the best right sides in the country and, and does a great job. Nice setter, great setter, great libero. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, you got two teams that are top 10, top 15 teams in the country. They're just, they're both, Stacked with talent, very, very balanced uh, teams. Question from Diane. So Kelly, watching those matches this weekend, I think one of the things I was most impressed with was your back row play, especially between Barnes and Boyer. Can you just talk about how well they were handling some of those big attacks, especially for Michigan? We were scrapping, no doubt about it, um, you know, and I thought uh, uh, I, I would say going back and watching the film that they were that they would probably be the first ones to say they were probably a little bit jittery in the backcourt and probably made some digs a little bit more difficult than what they needed to be, probably, um, you know, and I think the service pressure that a couple of the servers put on from Michigan they've got is is really uh really impressive, you know, so they're under fire quite a bit. I really like the way that, that, um, um, that our backcourt players dug in when the match was on the line, you know, and I think that may be what you, be, what you were talking about. I thought we were uh, probably a little bit off for the good portion of the match, but when it got right down to it, I thought Boyer and, and Barnes and, and, um, uh, and Izzy, all three of them really, really defended at a high level and it took their game up to another level when it, when it was on the line. And that's, you know, that's what you expect out of them. Uh, we've got a question from Lee, and then we'll go to a, a second question from Dennis. Lee? Kelly, from watching Big Ten matches, correct me if I'm wrong, it feels like from top to bottom, blocking, digging, overall team defense, and, you know, just team defense is better than I've ever seen it. Is that a fair assessment? And I mean, it's not like it's been bad in the past, but I mean, it just seems like it's just more fierce than ever. It's, it's, it's pretty tough, you know, and, and maybe a part of it is that you've got a lot of experienced middles out there uh, that, that are, that are playing. That may be a part of it, but uh, yeah, I, I don't see anything that that would have me disagreeing with you. Was that a follow? Was there a lead into something, or was that just was that it? You know, I'm just just you know making you have a good afternoon here with a lot to talk about, and you know, looking forward to darkening your doors this week. Yeah, it's a. Um, there's a lot of experienced liberos out there. You know, you you look yeah. you look across, uh, and even the ones that aren't experienced are really talented. That you know the young ones aren't playing like they're young, so the liberos are really good. You've got a lot of experienced uh, middle blockers that uh, uh, that are back in the league. Um, yeah, it's it's tough to score. Question from Dennis. Uh, uh, Izzy, uh, you you kind of expect that she she makes her biggest contribution usually from the service line but her role has expanded a little bit more and she's even passed a little bit. She had a, a perfect pass uh, off of Michigan State's top server the other day. Um, just her all around game and, and how you are able to utilize it and how she's grown into a little bit bigger role. There's not a position on the court that Izzy doesn't think she should be uh, that she's capable of playing. She thinks she's capable of playing every position. We'll put it, we'll put it that way. Um, and um, has the confidence and, and the moxie to probably back up some of it. Um, it's uh, she's, she gives us an awful lot with just her presence, you know, and um, uh, but first, first of all, if, if you're going to, if you're a setter and you're going to pass in a big 10 match, you, the first thing is you better believe that you can do it. Um, she's so it starts with, with a confidence that she has, but uh, the kid works. I mean, she works on her passing. She works on her digging. She's in before practice every day, working on her serve. She's, she's 
in early setting. I mean, it's just, it's, um, she works on her craft and all the possibilities that she can, uh, she can impact the match. So when you're throwing her into a serving pattern or a uh, server seat pattern, um, you know that she's number one, believes in herself and number two, that she's put the work in to be able to handle something that's, that's coming her way. Um, yeah, she's a unique, special kid. Question from Diane. So believe it or not, this weekend marks the halfway point of the Big Ten season. What do you think just the conference overall has shown through this first part? And what's up in the second half? Our next four matches are against teams ranked in the top 15 in the country. And I can't believe that there's too many teams that have that kind of stretch uh, in, in front of them. I mean, that's a, that's a gnarly stretch. Um, I think a lot of the top teams are playing against each other. Top teams in the rankings are playing against each other here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I think it's fair to say that we're going to, we're all going to learn a lot about ourselves Um you know, there'll probably be a little bit more possibility of a little bit more separation within the standings um, these these next couple of weeks. Uh, I see a lot of teams that are getting better is, is what I'm seeing in, in the Big Ten. It's uh, uh, I think some teams figuring out a little bit more about who they are. Um, I, I see growth and development that is happening uh, amongst a lot of the teams. Uh, it's. It, this is going to be a fabulous ride down the stretch, you, you know, uh, in, in our league and across the country, it's, there are some, there are some different teams that are, that are move themselves up to the top nationally that you're not used to seeing, which is great for our sport. And you're seeing the capabilities of anybody uh, beating anybody on any given night. I think you've seen that in, Certainly in our league, you've seen it recently in the PAC. You've seen it recently in the SEC. Um, and I'm not sure how many times you've seen teams at the lower level of the conference in those powerful leagues beating the top teams. You, you've seen them hanging with the top teams. This year, you've seen them beat them. Uh, and that's, that's great for our sport. 